Now, as it's the end of the financial year, I've had a look at how my eBay reselling business has been performing. And over the past six months, I've been hitting my 500 pound profit total per month, which is great. And I thought in this video, as well as showing you a few things that are sold this weekend, I thought I would take you through what my usual eBay reselling week looks like, what I get up to day to day to hit that 500 pound profit per month total. Let's get on with it. All right, so here we go. What I'm gonna do is structure a typical week for me reselling. Along the top, we've got days of the week, and I split my days into morning, afternoon, and evening. And we'll run through what I do every day to, to hit that 500 pound profit total per month. Right, starting on Monday. Monday is a pretty straightforward one. I do have a full-time job, and I work four, four days a week. So Monday morning and Monday afternoon, I'm working in my full-time job. But in my lunch break, what I do do is I go to the post office and post all of my weekend orders. Anything that sells Saturday and Sunday, I post on the Monday lunchtime. Monday evenings, again, I do absolutely nothing. Pretty straightforward, isn't it? Monday is an eBay free and a YouTube free day because it's important to spend time with your family and do other things as well. Tuesday. I work in the morning, my full-time job, nothing. In the afternoon, nothing. I don't go to the post office on a Tuesday, so anything that sells Monday, I hold and I post that on a Wednesday. In the evenings on a Tuesday, I do packaging. And I package everything that is sold Monday and Tuesday. I'll also do a little YouTube video as well recording what sells Monday and Tuesday. Total time to do that, I would say about an hour. One hour. Wednesday, right. Wednesday, I don't work in my full-time job. I actually reduced my hours last year to have this free to be an eBay reselling day. And in the morning, I go with my son to the charity shops. And I say I probably spend three hours charity shopping. This is one of the only opportunities I do get to source stock to resell. So I've got to make the most of that. And as part of that morning, I also do my posting. And that is when I post the Monday and Tuesday parcels. Wednesday afternoon, I list on eBay. And my aim is to list everything I've picked up that morning in the charity shop. And I'll be listing for probably two hours. Wednesday evening, I do a, another YouTube video. And that's capturing everything that I've picked up in the charity shop and everything that's sold on the Wednesday as well. So Wednesday is a pretty full on eBay day. Thursday, back to the full time job. Thursday morning and Thursday afternoon, I'm working. Now I do sometimes go to the post office on a Thursday if it's been a particularly busy Wednesday, but I tend to not do that. So cross those out. And in the, uh, in the evening, I will do a little YouTube video of everything that has sold on Thursday and also packaging up everything that has sold Thursday. Let's add one hour for that. On to Friday, full-time job in the morning. I go to the post office every Friday lunchtime, and that is to post everything that's sold Wednesday and everything that's sold Thursday. Friday afternoon, not working. In the evening, depending on what I've got on, I might do an hour's worth of listing. And that hour is used really to capture anything that I don't get through on the Wednesday. It rolls over and I list it in the evening. Saturday morning, and we're actually going to go before a.m. I get up and do a boot sale. From about 6 a.m. till 9 a.m. And the aim for that is to be back home before the real day starts. We get home before the kids are really up and out. 
So I don't want anything to impact my weekend really when it comes to eBay. So Saturday morning, I do nothing. Saturday afternoon, I do nothing. Saturday evening, I do nothing. Sunday in the morning, nothing. Sunday in the afternoon, I might do a couple of hours listing. And the purpose of that is to try and list everything I've picked up at the boot sale. But that is it in the afternoon. In the evening, I'll pull together another YouTube video of everything that I've picked up at the boot sale and everything that has sold across the weekend. And I'll also do my packaging. Ready to be posted on the Monday. Now, the, now these type of videos, any of the U, YouTube resellers will tell you, processing these boot sale videos takes a while. So I'm going to lump on two and a half hours, maybe, of that time. So all in all, that is what I get to, up to in a typical week. Right, so if we just go through some of the key points of this, you'll, you will see that I make reselling work around my lifestyle. I do have a full-time job and I make sure I spend plenty of time and allow plenty of time to spend with my family. Reselling has to work around it. Now, all these times you see in the evening, a lot of the packaging times, I don't really count that as doing reselling. I do that whenever I'm doing other things. You know, I might have the TV on, I might be watching YouTube videos. It's not lost time because I do it while I'm doing other things. The postage time as well. I make that work for me. I do it in my lunch hour. It's not taking any time out of my day. Reselling for me, is channeled in two days, Wednesday, and then split across Saturday and Sunday, totaling about one day. And across that time, I'm able to make 500 pounds profit per month. But look, this is so simplistic. There are other things that go on outside of just this structure. Think of the times that I do the swaps with Connor, the Welsh poker picker. That's not captured in here. That's stock coming in. That's me finding times, extra times in the evening to list all that stuff. Anything I buy off Facebook Marketplace, which I used to do a fair bit, don't do so much now, that's got to be factored in. Any eBay purchases I do, like all the sports cards and sports stickers, that's not factored in on here. So actually, I do spend more time than what I'm showing here on my eBay reselling. But look, let's talk about financials for a little bit. I'm spending two days a week to make £500 per month. That averages about £60 per day. That's what I need to do. I need to make £60 on a Wednesday, £60 on the weekend. But how can I actually grow? How can I grow any more than that? Now, I've obviously got more time in the evenings to do listing. Finding time to do listing for me is not a problem. The issue is finding time to source. Charity shops are only open nine to five weekdays. You might get lucky and find ones that open on a Saturday. But because I work full time, I've, I have to do my charity shopping on the Wednesday. I just have to. I could maybe go on the Saturday morning, but then I'm eating into my family time. And I don't want to do that. I've also target one boot sale a weekend. I could do a Saturday one. I could do a Sunday one. That would give me a chance to get more stock. But whenever I go to the boot sale and get up early doors, it does knock me out for the rest of the day. I am tired, particularly when you get to the late afternoon in the evenings. I've only got enough energy to do one per weekend, if I'm honest, without letting it impact the other things that I want to do. So I'm keen to keep that at one. So what is holding me back from growing my business is not the time li listing, it's actually the opportunities to source. But look, this naturally leads on to the question, how can I find more time to source? Well, the only time I could source more is if I drop more days of my full time job. And look, I'm not in a position to do that. I need to work those four days to keep where I am in my full-time job. It's not an option to do that. Let's go through a hypothetical situation. Let's say I packed in my full-time job and I was able to work six days a week eBay reselling. So that's Monday to Friday plus summing up one day across the weekend. At my current rate, I'm earning £60 per day. So times up by six, that's £360 a week. 52 weeks in a year, £18,700 per year salary. And that's before taxes, anything like that. I'm nowhere near earning enough reselling currently to even consider that. But look, what happens if I manage to make this £100 per day? What if I was able to increase the amount I source? 
either stock wise, just total volume, or just go out and source better, higher value items to make sure that I could get a hundred pounds per day. Well, that would make it 600 pounds per week, 52 weeks in a year. You're looking at about 31,200 pounds, something like that. Sounding a bit more appealing, isn't it? What if you could make 150 pounds per day doing this? Now that is about a 46,000 pound per year salary. It sounds nice, right? but that is easier said than done. I'm only earning 60 pounds per day. And if even to go up to 100 pounds, I'm not quite doubling what I need to do, but it is gonna take a considerable effort to jump from making 60 pounds to 100 pounds a day, let alone doing that every single day a week. You know, if I go to the charity shops here, I'm gonna to have to find another set of charity shops to go to the next day somewhere, and then another set to go the, you know, is that is that possible? I don't know. Maybe it is. You'd have to certainly look at other ways of bringing in stock. You might have to go to auction houses and you might have to have a look on Facebook Marketplace again. There might be midweek boot sales you could go to. You'd have to get a lot more creative than just a basic structure like this. So what all of this boils down to is I've got a nice structure going on here that allows me to enjoy eBay reselling as a hobby and make £500 a month. Now, there are some slight little changes I could do here to increase the amount of money that I bring in per month, but to even consider going full time, and I know everyone's situation is different, to drop the four days a week, lose the stability of the full time job, which I quite enjoy anyway, and that does fund everything that I need here. Keeping my eBay reselling a hobby, it's a big, big risk. It's a big risk. Unless I can considerably grow from making £60 a day to, say, £100 or £150 a day, it's just not an option. I can't see how eBay reselling can bring in enough money to make it worth full time. Right. Anyway, enough of the figures, enough of the tables. Let's run through what has sold on eBay so far this weekend. Now, Thursday has been a pretty solid day for me on eBay. I've only sold six things, but... The total sales value is about £100 with postage on top. And there's just some really nice, cool items here. Nice bit of variety. And actually, let's start with my favourite. Whoever thought making a Monster Trek Teddy would be a good thing? Look, I am all for that. Because that is just really cool. And what, like, a random concept. It is by Monster Jam. And this is the second one of these which I've sold. Although the first one was more of, like, a dog-shaped Dalmatian type thing. That one went for £20 plus postage. This has gone for just under that £18.50 plus postage. And I would have paid a couple of quid in the charity shop. Keep an eye out, I know it's random, for Monster Truck plushes. They are cool. Next step, and oh, this is also really cool. I got this in the last poker pickup and it is a vintage Kenner X-Wing. Tested, the mechanism works, push R2T2 down and the wing's flat there. It's not in the best condition, mind. Some of the stickers appealing, should have a little lid in there for the cockpit, should have guns on the side, they're obviously missing, but for its age, it's in reasonable condition. Sticker's okay on the back. That went for £20 plus postage, so a nice sale. Next up, I sold this Corgi Trucks Wimpy Dumper Truck. Now, I paid a couple of quid at the boot sale for this. I mean, the box is absolutely battered, but I know that there are collectors of just die-cast construction vehicles. This is Wimpy branded, so that adds to the value. That went for £12 plus postage. And actually, I've just seen there's an old Woolworth sticker on the top, so that's where it was bought originally. Can't see the price. That's worn away. It looks like it was maybe £1.75. Imagine that. 12 quid plus postage. Smaller sale now, I got this from a swap with Connor ages ago. It's this Captain America Disney Storm mug. That one went for £10 all in. These shoes, these shoes, I absolutely love these shoes. Adidas Gazelles, OG style with the gold gazelle symbol down the bottom. Pink suede, high top, UK size 5. There is a bit of wear at the back and a bit of wear on the toe there. Paid five or six quid for those, something like that. They sold for £20 plus postage. I went back and forward a little bit with the buyer. We settled on £20, which is at the higher end of the sold listings. So I'm pleased with that sale. And the final sale. Now, I've had this for ages because I've been holding out for the price I think it deserves. I've got a Retro Galoob boxed Micro Machines Marina set. Bit of a mouthful. 
it is near complete and i say that because it doesn't have the original plane in it's got all of the place set but doesn't have the plane now what holds the value with this like most of these old things is the box and the box is in reasonable condition bit of a bit of a bend there where it, where it folds um i held out and got 30 pounds all in for that believe it or not i found that in a charity shop for a couple of quid so all in all it's been a really solid thursday 100 pounds worth of sales plus postage now friday on ebay i sold four things in total total sales value about 80 pounds plus postage and the first sale was another kenner star wars ship this is the this is the rebel transport ship and I, it, it's 99 percent complete the only thing missing is there should be some small little gas masks and things like that inside doesn't have those but it's got the little like access hatch there the little door there it's got the guns inside on the back all the stickers are complete it was a bit grubby i did have to clean it up and i could have cleaned it up a bit more you can see there is still a bit of pen mark and and yeah just just some little nicks in it but you know what i cleaned it enough so that i could sell it for a reasonable price and i sold this for 50 pounds plus postage it's going on the global shipping program over to denmark now i was in two minds i could have parted this out and probably got a bit more that hatch on the bottom will go for about 15 pounds on its own the guns inside at the back they go for about 25 pounds plus postage but it's quite a big unit isn't it i thought let's sell it all as one keep it off of the shelf i don't want stuff like this hanging around too long and you know what i was happy with the price the next sale was a disney store elsa doll off of frozen the key thing about this one is it's got this little purple shawl with it now because it's got that that makes this a 10 pounds plus postage sale rather than a five pounds plus postage sale if it didn't have that one now this type of plush these disney store princesses i seem to just be able to sell them i mean sometimes they don't go very quickly and they don't usually go for mega mega money but on average five to six pounds each plus postage and not bad if you're picking them up for about 50 pence each so i do tend to look out for this style of plush next up you you only saw me pick these up wednesday and I was in two minds because they do have a little bit of damage on the back there. Although it's, it's really superficial and you've got to look quite closely for, for it. The key with these Converse though and why they're not just a normal bog standard black pair is they are Lunalon. See that in there? So they are UK size 9 Lunalon. They sold for £18.50 plus postage. Only paid 6 quid, so that's a quick £10 profit. And the final sale of Friday was these two goosebumps jigsaws mega retro love the pictures thing is that one's complete this one's got a piece missing so basically i sold that one and gave that one in for free those two together went for eight pounds plus postage and that wraps up pretty nice friday now i know at the start of the video i was showing you my structure per week well i threw it out the window this weekend because i just didn't fancy the boot sale the reason being right i went to the post office friday and i popped into the charity shop next door which i do pretty much all the time i go to the post office and i found this box and in here are six maybe five or six transformers something like that and they only wanted a pound 50 each well i went old school and said look i'll give you 15 quid for the box because i know there are some nice ones in here and they were chuffed with that because i'm giving them more than what they asked for and I'm chuffed with it because there are some decent toys in here. And I did that as well because I get on with um, the team in there anyway. And it means that they do tend to keep a few bits for me as well. So let me run you through some of these Transformers. The first one here. We've got from 2007, the movie version of Blackout. The Decepticon helicopter. Working mechanism. Really nice detailing on the side of the Transformer liking this a lot and this is one that i don't have in my collection there he is there nice distinctive decepticon logo on the front bit of red light piping on the back there it's got all the rotors on the back is missing the scorpionock that should go in there but that's definitely one for my collection next up we've got a defense hot shot it's like an all-purpose, all-terrain vehicle there. Is missing a few of the missiles. Let's get him transformed. And there he is there. 
Quite a basic transformation, plenty of firepower, but love the style of him. Again, one I don't have in my collection, and one that will be going straight up on the shelf. Next up, we've got a movie ratchet. This is Voyager class, so a nice sizable one from 2006. It is a Hummer. It does say Hummer on the grill there. Now, already I can see that it is missing the top. There should be a plastic kind of rack with a spare wheel on there. Never mind, though. Bit of a lazy kind of... <laughs> to hide the transformer, it's a bit lazy, look, you can see his head there. If he goes over like some rocks a bit quick, that's gonna, yeah, that's gonna work, isn't it? But let's get him transformed. Yeah, I like that one a lot. Nice intuitive transformation, plenty of detailing, bit of light piping on the back there, which makes his eyes shine. Nice transformer that, although I do have a few ratchet transformers, so I don't know if it will go into the collection. This one might be up for sale. Now this has got to be one of my favourite transformers from the box. Look at that, great model of, of a crane. This is from 2004, it's called Mudflap, a Decepticon. I don't have this in my collection. Let's see how it transforms. And there he is. What a great transformation, nice and simple, some nice clever details around the head, lovely bit of light piping really making his eyes pop there, loving the face sculpt. Pretty basic though, you can see these two here, he needs that wide base because I don't know what really to do with this arm here, it doesn't really go anywhere. It'd be nice if they could have designed that a bit better. Either way, this one's definitely going in the collection. Love that one a lot. And this is the final one in the box, saving the biggest to last. From 2004, we've got a Galaxy Force Optimus Prime. What an absolute beast. It's got a working cannon on the side here. Push the button. Love that. Got a few missiles on the side here. Tested. Working. Just a great looking transformer. It is quite a lazy concealment of the robot features. That's Optimus Prime's head right there. You literally just push it down and it's there. Surely they could have done something a bit better than that, but what an absolute monster. Let's get it transformed. So there's the Optimus Prime part of it. I like the way that you lift the head up, turn these flaps out so it stops the head pushing down. Open up his chest here. And if we fold this down a little bit, we should see he's got the matrix inside. There it is there, got his little matrix inside. A good looking Optimus Prime figure. Let's see what all of this does. So that was actually quite a difficult transformation. I had to look at the instructions to see how all the trailer folded up and clipped on the back, but there he is, looking at an absolute monster. And as a size comparison, I've got all my other Optimuses here as well. So there's your G1 original Optimus Prime there. There's a little Legion class. There's the masterpiece one. Look at that, absolute beauty. Compared to this monstrosity, the Beast Hunter one there. And there's yeah. one that you will see up on my shelf in the background there. Now the problem I do find with buying Transformers is they are such a guilty pleasure for me. And yes, there is money that can be made, but most of them just end up on my shelf and they will probably never be sold. So it's actually money lost. But is it though? Because they look cool. Anyway. Let me run you through what sold on Saturday and Sunday on eBay. I will leave the best sale to last and it is a cracker. Um, and yeah, it's been pretty good. We've sold nine things in total. Nice bit of profit as well. First sale, this Tempest Shadow Build-A-Bear My Little Pony with Cool Mohican. Now, I can't remember what I paid for this. Would have been a couple of quid. I mean, it could have been from the boot sale or the charity shop. I don't know. It's kind of all blended into one a little bit. But this has gone for £9.50 plus postage. So a nice sale. Next up, I definitely got this from the Poker Picker in um, one of the old trades. From 1985, this is called Hoppopotamus. That one went for £6.50 plus postage. So pleased with that. And it's in terrible condition. Look, all the paint's scratched. A few little dings on there. But even so, nice sale. Another thing from a recent Poker Picker, a Swap with Connor pair of six and a half Vans high top suede black shoes. Pretty bog standard. They went for £14 plus postage. And another shoe sale. I sold these Footjoy UK size 8 
hard ground golf shoes. They're basically spikeless, but they've still got these little nobbles on there to give extra grip. Not in the best condition, few scuffs, few scratches. Paid five pounds at the boot sale. They've gone for 20 quid all in. Now this cross stitch didn't hang around for long. Remember this, Jan Lin from the charity shop on Wednesday paid a pound. It is counted cross stitch about cats. That's gone on the global shipping program to America for £18.50 plus postage. Chuffed for that one. We've got a Monster High doll. This is Laguna Blue, one of the first wave, 2008, with original clothes on. That went for £7.50 plus postage. And this was a nice little surprise. This is the Flea Master off of Bugs Life. Still got the um, tag on. Really difficult to price this because there were none sold on, on eBay, none listed on eBay. Quite a rare figure. And if you're into your Bugs Life characters and, a, 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 and are a collector, you're going to want it, aren't you? This one went for £20 plus postage. Pleased with that one too. And now I've left the two best sales to the end and they're both sports cards. So I've sold my first MGC graded card. It's the 2005 Cristiano Ronaldo Futera Unique. It's one of the first cards of him in his international kit there. It is only MGC 7. And I sold that for £60 plus postage. Now, it's so hard to price these cards raw. If you go on eBay and search this card, the cheapest one raw is about 150 quid. But no one's buying them. They're not worth that. People are listing them for that, hoping they might get a bite. They're not worth that. The last sold in February went for about £22, £25, something like that. I bought 12 of these about 18 months ago for a tenner each. £60. So I think it's fair to say if you go off the February sold listing, that having it graded by MGC has added value onto it. So I'm pleased to get my first MGC sale done. But this is the best card sale. Now remember last video, I was gutted that I didn't accept the offer for 250. I got greedy and counted at 300. Wow, what I did after that was I lowered my buy it now price to 350 pounds. I had an offer come in from someone in America, a different buyer this time, they offered 275 pounds. I did not learn, I did not learn from what I did before and I still counted it. I counted for 300 because it was only his first offer and he accepted it. So this SGC Grade 9 2009 Top Trump of Lewis Hamilton has sold for £300 plus postage. Chuff for that sale. Considering you can buy this card raw off of eBay for about 50 quid, there's, there's money to be made out there for this type of thing. And my whole strategy about sports cards and stickers is if you can find things that are only produced in the UK like this, then you're going to have foreign collectors who are going to pay a premium to get it from you. That's what I think anyway. So all in all, it's been a really good weekend. Really pleased with how eBay is going at the minute. So guys, I really hope you're enjoying the videos as well. Um, if you are, hit that like, hit that subscribe, and I'll catch up with you in the next one. See you guys. Bye-bye.